So my presentation today is on dietary supplements. This right here is an iodine goiter, or sorry, a thyroid goiter caused by an iodine deficiency. These rotten teeth could have been prevented um, through a fluoride supplement. And this baby right here has a neural tube defect um, caused by the mother's uh, folic acid deficiency during pregnancy. And that curved bone right there, that is uh, known as rickets and it's caused by a vitamin D deficiency. Now all of these um, diseases that we just saw have one thing in common, is that they all could have been prevented through supplementation. Um, dietary supplements were invented in the early 1900s um, and their popularity has just exploded over the years to the point where even in the U.S. government, um, uh, our foods are fortified um, with different vitamins. For example, our salt is fortified with iodine and our milk is supplement or is fortified with um, vitamins A and D and our water is even fortified with um, fluoride. Now there is such a thing as having too much of a good thing. While it is very hard to overdose on um, dietary supplements, it is possible or to overdose on vitamins, it is possible. Our bodies are very good at filtering out um, excess vitamins and minerals, so you don't see it often. But in this example right here, you can see um, the, the baby has kind of an orange hue due to an increased amount of beta carotene, which is commonly found in carrots. And carrots are commonly found in baby food, which is commonly fortified. So there is some controversy surrounding taking dietary supplements, and most of this controversy comes from just the fact that they're being used inappropriately. So ways that they're being used inappropriately is through um, people are trying to replace their medications with supplements or they're replacing food with supplements. And the FDA warns against both these things on their website and they emphasize very strongly that supplements should not and cannot be used to replace either of those things. Um, now I don't know about you guys, but it seems like every time I turn on the TV or I scroll through Instagram on my phone, there seems to be um, a new advertisement for a new supplement that will magically fix your eyesight or um, fix your joint pain or your hair. And the reality of that is that um, it's just not beneficial to us as average American citizens to take those additional supplements because we get all the nutrients we need through our um, diet. Um, so people will try to replace their food with supplements in order to lose weight or as part of a diet. And that's just really very unhealthy and unsafe and you're doing more harm than good when you're trying to replace your food with supplements because your body still needs food to survive and to function. Another reason there's controversy surrounding supplements is because there is no oversight of the supplement industry. This means that the FDA has no idea what is in the supplements, um, if they're effective, or even if they're safe. In a Harvard health um, experiment, uh, they found that when actually testing the effects of a certain supplement in a controlled environment, they found that the effects were really very minimal and not nearly as impressive as they were advertised to be. So that kind of leads us to think, well, at what point are they useful? There are people who still really benefit from taking supplements, such as the elderly people, um, malnourished, and pregnant women. Elder some elderly people suffer from a loss of appetite, which makes it difficult for them to receive the, um, the nutrients they need on a daily basis through their diet. So this can be fixed by taking dietary supplements, which will help them live a longer and healthier life. 
There are many parts of the world um, where countries are still developing and people may not have um, access to resources and nutrients um, due to things like poverty or just limited access. An example of this is a woman named Soren Ratha. She lives in Cambodia and her and her entire family suffered from thyroid goiters, as we saw earlier in the presentation. Um, they, she was visited by a worker, um, a healthcare worker, when she was 13 years old. And when they left, they left them with iodized salt. So that's um, salt fortified with iodine. Um, and just a quarter milligram a day of um, this fortified salt of iodine can help reverse the effects and prevent um, thyroid goiters. Now, as a 28 year old woman with two children, she's healthy and her family is healthy. And she says that she's very grateful for the knowledge she has of um, what supplements can do for her. And she's grateful for the health that has that it has brought for her and her family. Um, pregnant women may also be advised to take dietary supplements such as folic acid or um, other vitamins to help assist them in a healthy uh, pregnancy. So in conclusion, when taking dietary supplements, there really is no right or wrong. There is no black and white. Um, but there is clear pros and cons. Um, pros being that they really benefit the people who need them. People who um, need to increase their intake of nutrients relative to their diets. Um, and cons being that, you know, sometimes we can overdo it. And well, there just really is no replacement for a good, healthy, balanced diet. Uh, whatever your decision is, whether it's to take supplements or to not take supplements, you should always include your doctor in your decisions and keep them updated because they may have um, advice or um, different ideas of what you could do. And if you're um, concerned or have any questions about a supplement, you should also consult with your